this is going to be another quick video from an email from YouTube subscriber so let me finish some of this stuff real quick though before I get into this Um, and while I'm fixing this really quickly, uh, I do read the uh, the emails. I do have a little bit more time to kind of focus and go all through those. Getting so close to the holidays, things are kind of spread out a little bit more for me. So I appreciate you guys watching the videos. I don't care if it's two or uh, 50. <laughs> of course, I want there to be more, but um, I just appreciate anyone taking the time out, no matter what it is. That so I'm going over here. And uh, hopefully this tutorial going forward, I'll be able to keep this. Once my um, try to get everything finalized with the feature and things like that, I will answer a lot of the questions about projects and things like that as well. Go into a little bit more detail. Uh, nothing too crazy like they would be doing in. Uh, like uh, X or Twitter or whatever where there's a back and forth most of the things that I go over will be things that I think will be able to motivate you and keep you with a positive vibe even if you do have like um, sometimes they're called consultations or I like just call them meetings when, you, when you're trying to meet with people and trying to get them to kind of understand what you're trying to do with your your feature and most of it's just uh, finding someone to kind of back you up when it comes to your creative ideas that's basically what it usually ends up being and um, those meetings can be fun because you don't know what kind of individual you're going to meet and with the uh, the other goals of trying to get um, I guess you would call them placements but I, uh, when I did see the uh, love robot in uh, series on, on Netflix and also I think it was on Disney where they did have a similar thing to that but it was basically uh, Star Wars themed shorts things like that um, I was like wow that is a good idea a lot of those those artists are, uh, from what I found out, they're very popular. Some of them are popular already, I would say, or they're uh, working for um, one of the bigger companies, which is awesome. I think my goal, what I want to do is for first time animator type things where you can do collaborations um, to get different styles out there and different... Um, artist you know telling whatever story but I, I thought that both of those like the the Netflix you know robot thing was pretty good and then also with the how Disney did that Star Wars thing so if we had something I would say is a little bit smaller for us uh, smaller artists or uh, artists that are trying to get a backing to kind of put their, their animation out the good thing about that is when you do have collaboration that you're working on those things can turn out to be a positive thing for whoever is backing you as far as if they are financing you in any way it's kind of like the same thing what they used to do with artists back in the day like you know you have uh, Picasso or you have somebody you know that was painting um, and that kind of 
saw something in them early on and and thought they had talent and they were willing to back them up for uh, hoping that the I mean the ultimate goal is to just get your stories out there um, but f I do understand the, the <laughs> recouping the money aspect of it as well um, but that's what you want you want someone that can believe in you and then when it gets to the point where you do have the ability to make money off of a project or a story you're telling um, they are uh, they are rewarded in that because they they actually uh, chose to back you up and that's a, necess uh, a necessary thing when it comes to new artists or um, people that might not be in a spotlight and the other thing was um, diversity basically diversity of um, styles drawing styles things of that nature um, because we do have the uh, like the mag, uh, mag, uh, animation or the, uh, the anime, what I call it, anime features. Um, sometimes you'll come across that and the styles are usually, uh, identical or same. And what I found out was like, when you do get to a certain point or you're working with a project on, maybe you're working with a project with something for a long time, the people that they work with, they don't really um, branch out from that style so maybe in the future we can have something like that going on where that um, and when I say style I'm not saying anything negative towards the way that usually we see a, uh, anime look or or mag look they do have a lot of different artists that are different when it comes to the art style but a majority of those uh, features it's usually from the same company that has a kind of look um, that you see, you may see a lot, which is not a bad thing. Um, but usually, when you do have that, you have a setup of a group of people that are used to or uh, conspiring um, to put a project out, but they have a look that they go for. So, when you do have some new artists that the look may be different, I think that if we have some kind of forum where we can kind of branch. Uh, ourselves or get ourselves kind of together where we can have other options I think that'll be a, a big thing um, because a lot of times when you are getting back from any entity that's you know financing you in that way they want to see results so a lot of times they'll go with the, the, you know with whatever the look is that's always been successful in the past we're going to stick with that so uh, my goal is to kind of get away from that a little bit and find artists that do have a different way of looking uh, at animation and be able to uh, kind of show that those projects can make money as well and I always go back to this a lot I say this a lot with everybody uh, it's going to be the story that is going to um, for me personally that's what I believe it's going to make you shine um, if we look at different kind of art styles, even if you're talking about uh, <laughs> when I first saw the Simpsons uh, style, right? For a lot of people, that was different at that time. And that person has gone on to make, I would say, whoever backed them a lot of uh, money. <laughs> so that is a, a thing. Uh, also, if you look at different um, you know, we say it now because we're so used to the, like these SpongeBob artists. We're used to seeing this this sort of that. Um, but when it first came out, it was different. Um, I remember a lot of different artists that were like, "How are these people with their drawing style? How are they getting you know to that market? And how are they been able to be successful as far as financing and and then also the financiers being." Uh, compensated for their for their choice um, those are all new I remember a lot of people had a lot of criticism about um, what someone's art would look like uh, even if you want to go to South Park <laughs> but I go back to that I, I, I mentioned these not to like crit critique them or or be like you know they're um, you know they're not worthy of all the attention they got um, I say that because uh, 
it goes back to my theory that a good story is going to be the modifier for all of that. Um, I've seen pencil art that looks great and the story behind it. You see a lot of award-winning artists uh, coming uh, up with, uh, I would say, a, a emotional theme. I remember seeing a, uh, like a short film about, and I don't really like going this, but um, I think it was about parents that have lost their child in a uh, tragedy. We'll just say that. Um, but that was a award, uh, award-winning uh, uh, animation, and if you look at that art style, it was it was close to what I would call a pencil art style. Um, so again, uh, you know, it's a, it may be a theory, but I think if you have a good story, it doesn't matter the art style. Uh, people will get used to that. Um, so hopefully, that'll be something that we can kind of get backers to understand a little bit more clearly and you know be able to springboard a lot of different people with uh, a lot of different ways of storytelling or art style so so enough of that so box kind of stuff um, on this one I'm gonna go over like uh, more of a the drawing stuff uh, for this one for the the YouTube questions and it was uh, a lot to do with uh, the quality between uh, the vectors and then the uh, drawing by hand. So I will go over that a little bit. Um, most of the time, that's going to be if you're doing, uh, if you're, or you're getting paid for whatever your, your work is and stuff like that. You have a a lot of different options when it comes to the quality. Um, vector is for me the best one because it does have a very clean look, no matter how much how close you get to it, right? And, and most artists like that that because it looks really clean, and I, I, that's the kind of style I like. So, um, but it looks really really uh, clean, and then when you do have like uh, you're doing a feature or something like that. Um, I use those pieces over and over again. So whenever I do form out everything as far as the the uh, the art and everything like that, that's what I'm going to go over here of how I just cut pieces up uh, or cut vector pieces up and then you can animate it and the, the quality looks pretty good. I wouldn't say pretty good, very good. Uh, very clean, you know, kind of look if you if that's what you're going for. And uh, oh, I, um, everything that I do as far as the vector, I use uh, Inkscape. It's a free uh, software that's out there anything that I, I go over as far as the the software is going to be things that I'm using that help me um, I'm never going to like I don't want to bad mouth any kind of uh, other ways of creating but um, this is just stuff that worked for me because uh, I'm not really the best when it comes to uh, drawing it how I like it meaning like there's a look that I want to see and it takes a while for you to kind of get there if you're just doing everything by hand. Uh, but most people understand this. Some, some if you're new, you, you probably won't. What'll happen is over time, uh, while you're drawing, you're gonna you're gonna see the difference <laughs> in um, uh, what that look is because it's basically because you it's repetitive. You, the, the more you do it, you're gonna you're gonna find that out. You're gonna come to one day where you're like doing something, and most other artists may not even appreciate it um, at first because you're like, well, I'm just this is my style, right? But um, eventually, what happens is whenever you start working, you're gonna see like, okay, this is starting to come together without any effort, um, like trace lines. Um, 
a, a lot of different things that you're gonna start to see that becomes clear to you and it's because it's gonna be you're gonna think it's just like okay well you know it, it's gonna be because uh, repetition and um, a lot of uh, people that draw or, or do art they will be able to uh, understand what I mean when I say that because there's a certain look that you, you have in your head that you're trying to portray on on uh, canvas or, or whatever you're drawing and you're trying to get a, a certain line a certain way um, uh, or a certain feel you know what I mean it, it takes a while to get there but repetitiveness is, is what's going to get you there and one day you're going to just be doing things and you're going to be like oh I like how everything every line that I'm, I'm drawing uh, I like the way that it looks and you're going to come across that and you're going to be, well for me I, I, it was a surprise I would say like wow like you know now I don't have to go back and keep going back over things uh, for for uh, a lot of artists are usually critical the way things look and if it doesn't look just right uh, it becomes an annoyance because you, you're, you keep going over and over again but um, that'll fix itself and it'll fix itself by keep drawing <laughs> and then one day you're gonna be like wow okay I don't have to keep going over these lines over and over again everything's kinda looking like I want it to look and you're gonna be surprised at that <laughs> And uh, I remember the day it happened to me. I was like, oh my, you know. Okay, great, good. Now I'm getting to the point where, you know, these things look uh, great in, in the way that you're. Uh, I should point out, this happens a lot when it comes to shading. This happens a lot when it comes to the kind of uh, lines that you're drawing. Um, that's when you're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come. It's going to come with shading lines um you know so some people or some of the people that i, I know just be like oh well the ultimate goal was when you were uh in art class or whatever was you know like, i could draw a perfect circle that they want you to try to do that because over time if you repeat those those uh techniques uh and, and most of the time when you first hear it your, your first person is just starting out going to annoy you because a lot of it is just things you're like why am I doing it's almost like a, let me think of a movie or something like okay karate kid karate kid yeah so you see how he had him like painting the fence it's that kind of um, outlook everything that you're doing you're not going to really understand it and it's going to become useful later and then you're going to understand why that you know maybe that that art teacher wanted you to kind of uh, do those things but they don't ever tell you that they just tell you to do this and then over time uh, it'll be a mixture of you doing things on your own and then one day you're say, oh man all the lines I'm making and all the shading that I'm making I like I can do it once and then and it's okay that's something that I'll uh, Hopefully it'll happen to you, but it, it happens to a lot, uh, a lot of other people that I speak to. And that's the other good thing about the internet, all right? Other artists can speak with other artists. You can get some help on things, right? You can get some advice, positive feedback, um, things like that. But it's always a good thing when you have other people that you can uh, speak to that's maybe in your same boat or maybe they're more advanced things like that All right. All right. and also um, when it comes to that making those connections whenever you do have a lot of different people that you're communicating with artist wise um, those can lead to uh, you know a spotlight on you if, if Whoever becomes successful first in a lot of ways, right? Uh, if they are, uh, you know, maybe they get their break. Um, they can kind of help you, guide you into getting it uh, as well. Uh, so, you know, communicate, make friends, 
I wouldn't say uh, or friends lightly, but communicate with like uh, pe other people that are doing the same thing you are. And then maybe, I don't know, you will become friends. It just depends. Um, but yeah, just keep positive. Uh, a couple other things that I see a lot of. Uh, most artists doubt themselves. It's part of it, I think. The critique of your it, of what you're seeing, um, which is a good thing. Um, I don't know. You guys, let me know. If you come across people that like other artists that are oh, you know, they've never experienced doubt. Um, I've never really experienced artists that have that <laughs> that kind of thinking but I'm pretty sure they're out there um, but yeah when you're when you're in doubt of things um, when you're you know you're trying to critique yourself which is always a good thing um, just remember you're just at the, if you're at the beginning stage that's always a great place to be because uh, you can kind of fail upwards I like to say and then once you do get a couple of, you know things under your belt a lot of that you forget um, but if you're a person that you know has humility and you understand you know that you are starting out um, it's helpful to find people that are uh, may have doubted their self in the past things like that so it'll give you the opportunity then to, to understand that that's normal and to keep going especially if you don't have anyone that's encouraging you uh, to do so and, you know It, it is uh it can be a hard thing when you're doing something where you know you may be the first people uh, we'll just point this out a lot of people are not <laughs> imagining full stories in their brain right like a lot of people will be like oh well that's not something they do uh they don't have any imagination of creating characters or um you know a, a lot of times people will hide behind that that story you know well I write stories um, kind of fall into that book category but it's more than that it is weird to be let me take that back it is different to be <laughs> have uh, a character that you see inside your head I mean fully flushed out character All right. It's, it's you can almost equate it to having an imaginary friend <laughs> in a way and a lot of people are not artists in that way so sometimes it can be difficult because you may be someone that thinks that way and a lot, most or a majority of people do not um, so sometimes you do need to hang out with people that are like you uh, and when you do that you're going to find out that oh it's not just you you do have a story in the brain that you've been wanting to tell for a very long time. Or as a child, even if you were, as a child, you were thinking about those things. So it, it's helpful to uh, have that, that ability to, to kind of talk to other people that are like-minded and won't criticize uh, criticize you. Especially if you're young and, and your parents have a certain kind of job they want you to go into uh, being an artist is not really one of those things that uh, will just come into you you know come into your lap sort of thing so uh, I would say always if you can Try to explain it to them once or twice, and if they don't get it, it's okay. 
Uh, there's other people like you out there. But on this video, I'm going to make it a little bit quick here. For the feedback. Um, the other thing is, if you know any other forums and things like that, where, because uh, there are a lot of them where you can, you can put your, your, your art up uh, for critique and different prizes. There's a lot of them. I don't, um, uh, if you have time to do that, you know, shoot me a list or whatever. Or if you have something you're working on that you can tell, some people can't tell what they're working on because they they may have backers and and people that are already financing them. But whatever you can uh, give to help us thrive as artists would be great, greatly appreciated. So if you have any feedback or if you have any other things that you've done that's been helpful for you getting your your work out there but uh, YouTube is great I didn't really focus on YouTube because pattern wise I wasn't seeing anything that was like a model out there of what to do but once I seen the um, those shorts on those platforms I was like well you can probably do that anyway so it's kind of put that that thought process in my head but on a smaller scale like unknowns yeah I did look up some of those artists um, that were featured in those and the thing was weird I was trying to figure out like why are they doing this because is Disney gonna let them <laughs> like some of those those Star Wars ones were pretty cool as far as the this even if the short stories like right, right? my question was like are they gonna let them continue to just do that <laughs> you know what I mean you know just like the whole story I'm not just talking about like um, what are, I, I can't I think it's, most of those were maybe what 15 minutes or less for the Star Wars ones but a lot of people were just like oh yeah they were more excited with, by that than a lot of other stuff that had going on. I was like, <laughs> so like maybe that's what we're going to do, you know? Maybe that's what they're going to do. Let those, it's like, oh, wow, because I, I saw a lot of comments, great comments about those shorts. So I was like, oh, maybe they'll pick out this person to have a, you know, maybe a series. But then again, I was like, well, why would they do that? Because they seem to be really all in on the the those adapted stories that they were doing. But what was the one that was this? there was a couple that were stand out I think the first one was that ninja one that was art the art style was different but cool story 
Uh, what was the other one? I'm trying to think which ones were my favorite ones. Out of them all. I think there was one where they, uh, I can't remember what it's called. I mean, do got the internet in front of me, but I'm pretty sure someone else will put it up in there. Um, this is actually going on uh, YouTube. Uh, I apologize. I, sh I should have said that at the beginning. I think I did. But if anyone knows, uh, the name of them, but I I'm just going to describe them. Um, there was one where the, I think the dad was like making life's, uh, a lightsaber for some uh, some Jedi's and it turned out to be a trap or something like that I like that one um, there was a couple things that I liked from some of them the other one was that the theme where I guess there was stormtroopers that were going to be um, I don't know it's, it seemed like they were doing some kind of planning some sabotage or you know they were the resistance and then uh, I guess the mom's child was taken away or something like that I remember that one um, there was a couple other ones that I like but some of them I I'd, I'd seen before like as far as the theme so when they, uh, I guess the two Jedi's were trying, to, there was a Sith Master or something like that, on the, on the planet, from what I remember. Um, but I kind of like, and that that's what made me think about, like, did they give like these well-known artists like a, like a feature pack just to do that? Because I remember, I, I think I know that artist or that company that makes that style of, uh, and I could be wrong, I'm just shooting off the, off the top, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't an unknown from what I remember, but I might be wrong. Let me know. but that one was pretty pretty good so which one probably will be my favorite if I'm not missing any there was another one where the um, can't remember that one but it was basically I guess it was like a female Sith or something like that but the, the art style was kind of crazy cool looking uh, I remember that one I guess my favorite one would probably be the ninja one. Um, or you know, the guy comes out and then there's they're fighting. I don't know, they were fighting in a cave from what I gotta go back and watch it again. I think they were fighting in a cave or something like that. From what I remember. let me go to the video for the uh, so basically the video and this is again going on uh, YouTube um, creating like the your, the face uh, for yourself and then uh, putting it into the vector um, so I'm gonna just show how I cut out And I'll play around with this, get it a little bit more 
fine tune later on. All right, so let's see. All right, so first, what I usually do here. So the drawing of the face, if I, uh, most of the stuff I'll, I will kind of cut out uh, and then like the pieces that I want to save and isolate those. Um, but the first part would be the, the hair part. And this is gonna be like a, a breakdown of like what you're gonna do with the face, um, like what pieces you're gonna import when it comes to just building it out in different ways you can do that. Um, with this one, we're gonna go over like the front piece of the hair, um, which will be separated. And I think I'm missing that part. Um, but basically, what we're going to do is we're going to um, the parts that are going to be all together are going to be just on uh, this face part and uh, the ears. This is uh, a weird character of mine because it has everyone's like, why does it have two ears? Is that on purpose? Yes. Um, so, but so we'll go over the head part first. Get all this other stuff out of the way. All right, that head part, yep. All right, so let's put the hair in here. All right, so for the hair cut out, uh, and if anyone knows, <laughs> ask me, what is that? What trick are you doing? I'm going to show you in one second here. Uh, first of all, with these layers, uh, if you're afraid of messing up, just duplicate them as many times as you like. And I do that uh, often. Uh, just keep a like a little uh, extra one there, just in case. Sometimes you won't mess up. So what we're going to do is we're going to collaborate the outline together real quickly here. Alright, so all those are the outlines. Alright, so this here part. Alright, and then what we'll do here is we'll duplicate this as well. Just have some extra ones just in case you mess up. And this is also helpful when you want to break these parts up. So we're going to remove everything we don't really care about right now. It's not working. Where is this part? That's weird. So this is the only thing that I should see, right? Yeah, that's it. And we duplicated it. Right. Well, you know what? I'm going to duplicate it again, just in case to be on the safe side. And save. And I just do that because you don't want to lose all your stuff. Sometimes you'll get a crash on your computer. Um, it's never been paint. It usually it'll be my computer that may weird so I'm not taking chances all right so let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff here because we don't need it and we just want to keep the ear parts
and this is going to be helpful for when we build the face as well but so let's go ahead and grab this here and edit copy so then we'll go over here to the inkscape edit paste and there we go we got our ear and trace bit map that's what we'll do here and then you can click ok and we have all your little our pieces here uh, for your ear it's like so it has all the different color breakdowns of the ear but they're all stacked on top of each other all right so usually what I'll do is I will keep the the best one I like this one here so I will kind of connect these pieces like so all right and if we're looking at it what we want we really want this outline here right and we want this kind of outline right about there kind of fades in to the ear that way All right so and I do this a lot so basically what I'm doing here is I'm just going to click the paint bucket and when you use the paint bucket in this way it'll just clone it right so we'll just click once here All right and it looks like it's blocking there All right so now we got our vector nice clean look right and you can go it depends on what, how crazy you want to go right so technically I can move these lines here like so All right and then even if you want to keep these outlines here uh, like this piece here right so it has a little bit of outline but not much right so what you can do is just go in here make a little slice like so right and uh, oh a reminder the setting on the nodes you can do as um, you can make adjustments in, in the settings um, but for me here what I usually do if there's too many nodes I'll just come here and, and just cut them out like that all right, and then I can just go in. You can kind of figure out how you want that to look here, all right? See, right about there. But you know what? I remember from doing this before because I want this. You don't really need this line because this technically will be coming from the face. Um, so let's keep it um, you can go if you want to trace over this or you're going to get it close to whatever you wanted to get it close to just open up the object and here's our color so just bring this down a little bit if you want to trace like so uh, usually if I'm tracing and the and the background is light um, red I'll just change the color and then I can go in and kind of get it as close as I want to because if you keep it black it's going to be hard for you to kind of designate, find out exactly where that line is but if you change the color here you can kind of see where you know you want to get to with the the art all right and you can play around with that all you like um, but for me we have what we need here so if I'm doing a fill these are all my colors right you can just match everything up you want to get matched up uh, let's change this back to black solid like so uh, you can use this piece if you like go here and then come in uh, usually what I'll do is I'll use paint bucket again and we'll just close this up 
so when we do the fill there's no spaces right so we can just go in and fill it in like that and click on here to get it matched up right and again you can come in and uh, play around with it all you like as far as that uh, and even if I'm doing my like my fades I'll use the same paint bucket method as well so shaded here in this area I'll just come in with the paint bucket I can click here and just get that fade that you want like so all right this right here again you could still manipulate this uh, if you do want to get rid of these when you do the fill and you want to get it all the way behind uh, to where there's no spacing when you go back here uh, make sure you block this off because if you don't it won't fill it'll just won't work there for you right. so if we go to the paint bucket if you look up here where it says grow and shrink We'll just click this up a little bit higher and you see how it feels more All right that's pretty close but if you if you don't want to worry about any behind overlap let's cut this out so I'm going to go to paint book here we'll just lower it a little bit All right yep. it's kind of still kind of thick there Let's lower it to 21. All right, that's a little bit better. All right, close but not overlapping. And just click on this here and just bring it all the way down, like so. So that'll fill it up. And remember, you can use use your dropper to kind of come in and and you know do all your shading whenever you like. So if we put this shading back here like that and say we want to blur it out or make it lighter right you can shade as dark or as light as you like and then you can play around with it right um, be careful with this here uh, you want to make sure because technically this is above the black like you can see here so whenever you do do these, uh, you want to make sure it's below the black like so. Or you can, you know, do whatever if you want. If that looks how you want it to, to look, you can do it that way. And kind of stick to that. Um, so here again, like we, if we see this fill here, uh, you can just go in and just you know fill that in like so right then when you click on this here just go all the way down like that so it's below the black and again you can come in and get it as close as you want it when uh, so if we notice this part here um, a lot of times I'll do the paint bucket like so and then make this a little bit lighter All right and then come in I can kind of guide it here so if I take this and go make sure it's below the black part and we can shrink it to like here because um, you look at the ear around the ear is a little bit lighter you have that little you know light part there you can play around with this all you like and, and get it as close as you like uh, for the ear 
And for me, this is probably a little bit darker than I like. So we can just lighten it up as we want. All right. Whatever kind of fade you want to do. Underneath the black part here. All right, so just keep playing around and stretch it like you like. All right, just like so. And you, you know, keep playing with it as you like. Uh, on this one, sometimes what I'll do here is this line. You come in, you can do a blur real quick. You know what I mean? All right, like so. And if the if you think it's too light, you just make the adjustment as you like here, or adjust the color, like so. But you can play around with that all you like. So that's pretty much it when it comes to Illustrator. So we just basically copy this, we can put it here. So uh, this would be technically one of my ears like that. And we're not gonna play around with it too much cause we're just doing a tutorial here. Uh, so go object, we can group it. All right. And then edit, and then we can duplicate it like that. All right, so we got both our ears there already. Uh, right for the hair, uh, so the part of the hair that we're going to. have as a cutout here. So we don't need these. Hey, what happened? Oh, okay, wrong, <laughs> in the wrong layer. Uh, we don't need these ears now, right? Because we already have those. So we cut that out. Uh, I already kind of pieced this together after it was uh, formed. I think I already made this piece here. Can't remember which one it was. I think I did an outline on this already. Let me find out. Uh, it, you. A lot of times, you know, it'll make this easier when you're trying to find a part you drew. You can label these. You can use letters and words. So when you're doing a, a video, you don't have to keep searching for it. Okay, I think I know what I did there. I think we had the outline and then. Yep. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm confusing myself. All right, there we go. We don't need that. So all right, yeah. So this outline. Let's duplicate that just in case. all of these here and remember on the um these are just basically the pieces that we're going to be using for when we get into uh the moho because that'll be uh, uh the breakdown of uh the head Can't remember what, what 
think I saved it somewhere else. Damn it. Can't remember where I saved it. But um, basically, this is what we're doing here. We're going to um, break down all of these different pieces from the uh, the ears and everything else. All right. And yeah, we, the ears look a little different. We, we changed those. So let's go back here. And make sure everything is where it needs to be. All right, so this is the, the outline. Right, so we're going to go ahead and merge the outline together. All right, good. Um, so we'll move these ears out of the way because we already have that vectorized and ears are already cleaned up. And cut these out here. Um, so that I can kind of change. So what I usually will do here, if this is what I'm going for, So what I'll do here is I'll go, I'll use the paint buck to, I want to call a race fill. Just click, make sure this is uh, cleared out on the, the alpha side. And make sure this is chained from normal to override. And then you can go ahead and erase fill those pieces out of there. The higher you have this, the closer it'll get. So, right, that. Get that out of here. And remember, this is just for the, the masking part because um, we're going to create a, uh, a rig character with all these different pieces. All right, so we already did the ears. We have that separated out. And we're gonna have the hair. And okay. So let's go ahead and go back here. And that looks about right. Now um what I usually will do here is and this you don't have to do it this way but this is going to uh, be something I'm going to kind of work on later and what I'll do is I'll just come in here and we'll just edit copy and new layer on top and then edit paste and there we go. Oh, that's kind of freaking out, right? Let's get our hands. Kind of like so. Let me check it with our face. So then we got our piece here. We'll just merge these two into one. And what I'll do is I'll come in close here and we will kind of fix these uh, hair pieces here. 
before we get it into the Inkscape for vectorizing. And again, uh, you don't have whatever style you want to do it in, you have the ability to do that. So, gonna make sure these, are these outlines look the way I want them to look for the head. Let's open the head up so we can kind of get an idea of where these are going to fall. And this strand here will just kind of hook it like so. Like that. And uh, whatever you want to fix, you can do it uh, in here because you can say if uh, it weirds you out that this is too identical, which it does for me. Um, you can make the changes here. You can maybe make this one higher than the other one or a little bit thicker. Just depends on what you want to do. So I'll make that one right about there. Then this one, maybe we'll make it a little bit longer, not too crazy. Right about there. Right about that. Yeah, that's okay. And on this one here, we'll have this strand here. Like that there. And fix this one here so that this is rounded out right about there. And same thing on this side. Maybe I want to make this a little bit shorter. Bring this here close in like that. And So, right, same thing here, just do the outline, like right there, and uh, maybe we don't want that one, so I'm going to cut that out, just to make it not look like a, a mirror too much. Go ahead and fix this now. Um, so the reason I'm cutting this piece out of this portion of the The hair is we're gonna have that separate uh, because if we have that separate, maybe we want uh, the hair on the top to be maybe blown in the wind. So when we do the create the full puppet for it, um, that'll be its own little thing there that we're gonna put on top. And let's go ahead. And Get this out of the way. So, like so. So this one will be shorter. That's. So this 
ちゃうかってもいいね Um, when we do the math for these little strands,、um, you can go back and fill them in or use them as, as you like. So I'm going to fill in this piece here. And this, there's pretty much going to be three pieces to the hair for the, the puppet. So it'll probably be like a bang, and then the, the hair from the top will be separated.、Um, but this is good, basically the, the, main,、uh, the main hair piece. And you don't have to go too wild here because we can, when we get it vectorized,、um, you can. Change those, you know, as you like when you get them into the vector, or you can change the color altogether. It's just going to be a reminder for me that one. And this one is on the other side. Six, yeah. So, it's color. And、um, again, you don't have to go too crazy here.、Uh, this will all be part of the、uh, vector. So, whatever angles that、uh, are kind of bothering you, whatever, you can go back and fix those. It's just for me so I can remember the color that it's supposed to be.、Uh, make sure you fix overwrite because if you don't, you try to come in and color,、uh, it won't blend, it'll just、uh, it'll remove pieces that you already kind of colored in. And it,、um, that adjustment. Will be here. So, say we wanted to just kind of lightly color in or blend a color.、Uh, if this is not back to normal, it'll erase it instead of you know, giving you that, that, that color change that you're looking for. And again,、um, You know, don't kill yourself over that part. Because we will be putting it into the vector. So, what was the other thing? Oh, there it is. Right in front of my face. Alright, so this is. Technically, again, gonna be just the main piece of the hair. And then we're gonna have some other things that are going to be on top. So, let's. 
go I'm just gonna duplicate this and save it just in case all right so I'm gonna come in and the front piece of the bang here cut that out as well because that front bang piece we may want it kind of like uh, blowing in the wind I want two of these. No, let's get rid of that. You know what? Let's get rid of this too. Leave that like that. It's a little bit better. So, um, so basically, this piece here is what we'll have here. This will be covered, but um, I'll use this here. Sometimes I use it because I want to remember what the aligning is. So, but this um, technically will have a bang on. This would be where the bang would sit on top of this. Um, usually, when I'll do this, when you come back to color it in, you want to come back and color that in because whenever the character's bangs are blowing in the wind or something, you don't want that to look exactly like the bang, right? So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this out now. Kind of get it the way I want because I already, I've already pretty much done this, but I want you to see it in the video. So, and it would look weird if it, it blowing in the wind that, oh, look, this part of the bang didn't move. So, I want to make sure that's fixed and you don't have to worry about that part looking crazy in your animation and come back here and you can do whatever color you want as far as what you want this to look um, but this is basically um, what's good so when the hair is blowing and the bang blows up this is the part you're gonna see All right so you just got to make sure that you imagine what that would look like underneath right so okay. pretty much would be the same strain of hair but just laid flat on the the head of your character so come in and get that these pieces here and let them lay on that so, and the other thing here uh, if you imagine what the bang would look like underneath um, and again you don't have to do that uh, so any way you want as far as the color to look um, but for me I would think that this would look a lot darker underneath so when I come in and color it I'll probably color it a little bit darker and again this could be changed when you vectorize it as well so you don't have to worry about going too, too crazy. And whenever you do get all your, those, your uh, like your vectorized pieces, um, remember you can keep those and you, and you can change them in the vector as well. So again, nothing has to be in stone, you know. You can always change colors of the hair as well, Pick the, depending on your, what you want to do.
and again your blend on here don't worry about it because we're gonna most of it's gonna be covered but good enough there let's go ahead and finalize this then we'll get this vectorized here and then we'll do the last part and you will be free to go Uh, when you are doing these little hair layers just remember like if you do have hair that's underneath other hair um, remember to try to have that that spacing right so this will be a little bit thicker if this is on top because it's laying on top of something else and um, I gotta remind myself you don't have to do it that way <laughs> just if, if you want only if you want to but uh, I'll, I'll just explain why some of these lines I'm making so hopefully that'll be helpful for whoever and remember you can always change it uh, usually when I do this uh, what I like to do is I'll put a line here right so where that hairs technically should be kind of flowing from and uh, this part here won't really matter at all because uh, the pinpoint of your bang that'll be in front say you want you're creating that to kind of have a bang to blow in the wind that'll kind of be covered for you so just worry about all the stuff that you'll be able to see as far as the the pieces Someone put it in there. Well, why, did, why do you have two ears? A human ear. <laughs> That's part of the story. <laughs> yes, it's on a purpose. I'm not uh, insane. Right about there. And again, when you come back and you do your mixes and all that stuff. You know, take your time. Don't rush yourself. And um, this doesn't really mean anything to you, but this is this is kind of uh, work for me in this way. So that's why, I'm <laughs> even though I'm doing the video, <laughs> there's certain things I don't want to do over. So make sure they're like I need them to look. Oh, 
the hidden part too. Is there? You know what? Let's get rid of that. That's bothering me. Right. So uh, when we finish doing everything you're doing, you can just basically merge all of these to one piece. Like so. So same thing we did before, when we uh, just go ahead in here and just, and you can edit and copy, edit, paste, right. and um, we're not going to go too crazy here because I don't want this video to be 100 like a hundred minutes long or anything so there we got those pieces for that right there now uh, on this one um, this is something I'll be doing so I'll duplicate this here maybe again um, because I'm going to separate the, the ears from this And as far as all your pieces, it's up to you how many cutouts you want to do. Um, on this one, I'm probably thinking about maybe a couple ones. Just it depends on your scene and and you know what your what your detail is as far as you know what you're trying to show. Um, but you can separate like uh, more than likely, I would separate a couple of these in the back that have blowing in the wind as well, which will give it more of a um, you know, more, I guess, detailed kind of scene if you want. And I think I'm going to do that because of what I want to uh, be able to use it for later. And again, when I when I save all of these in Inkscape, um, you, you have the ability to edit and, and do all kinds of different things that you want to get done. For your uh, all the pieces that you're building for the for the face before we get it into uh, moho so technically here you see that this bang is gone um, for the character uh, technically this character is going to be uh, end up um, upside down right so um, this is just going to be the part one of we're going through the pieces but I just want to kind of illustrate what this is going to be so if we have the bang here of course if he's upside down right maybe some of the hair closest heads won't uh, stay there um, maybe a couple strands here will come up depending on how, how detailed you want it to be but um, that's the purpose of having all these these different pieces of the hair and separating the ears and everything like that because those are the pieces you're going to want to move around so if we're even if we're looking at the ears here let me kind of I guess I can play around with it a little bit whenever we do get the bones and everything in place whatever you have attached to um, you know what you want to move could technically uh, ears if you did have it connected to the face it'll move like this which is not bad right but if you have it 
uh, this piece here, just this earpiece separate, it's going to make it a lot easier when you're trying to do more detailed animation, you know, where you do want the, the ears to kind of function in a way. Maybe they perk up, maybe they go down because the character is, you know, embarrassed or sad. Um, you can, you have all those elements to kind of uh, work with when you do have more pieces for the, for the face. And that goes with everything. Like, there's no eyelids on here yet. Um, but, you know, same breakdown for like the mouth and, and, and everything like that. Usually what I'll do is um, I'll play around with the, a, like a, a character that's just been penciled in and not completely vectorized. I think the eyes may be vectorized. No, they're not. But what I'll do is um, I won't vectorize everything when I'm playing around with like the, the movements for the character. Um, because it really doesn't matter at this stage. It's it's not really going to be uh, the final uh, project when it comes to this animation. But it allows me to go in and, and start to play around with different things, different movements. Um, you know, making sure I do have the ability to change things. Uh, on this particular one, um, because of when I wrote the story there's a scene where the character is in a tree and then later on when I was thinking about different movements to do uh, for the feature and stuff like that I, I thought about oh, okay maybe that could work where you know maybe he's in a tree and then uh, he technically this character will be introduced to another character um, it'll be sort of a surprise for both of them but um, I thought it would be a, a cool element just to add a little bit of extra for the the um, uh, technically these two characters are going to be in a wooded area but it's going to be a mixture between a wooded area and a forest um, so a lot of the different things the elements that I'm bringing into it I want to see like different color fireflies because um, one character is not really from this planet um, so if, if you're a human being and you see fireflies that way um, I'm setting it up to where it's going to kind of look like it's a uh, Christmas tree lights. So as the character gets closer and closer, you know, it's kind of weird, but oh, okay, it's Christmas tree lights that are outside, right? So as the character gets closer, um, let's find out those are kind of like fireflies on this planet and they'll disperse. Uh, and then this character technically will be hanging from... Uh, a tree because this character is going to be surprised to see this different creature coming towards them um, but there's a lot of different detail that I have in uh, for the eyes that are going to happen when these two characters come together um, I want that be a moment of um, uh, I wouldn't say like a subtle curiosity type of feel that I want to get for it and then I thought about hanging from the tree um, upside down with the hair so I want to go ahead and add that that element to it uh, since this is probably going to be attached somehow to the when the, the feature is completed everything that I, I'm probably going to be put on it might be critiqued and, and cut down but all of these different ex explanations of what I'm doing for the, uh, the characters and the scene set up uh, the scene setups and everything like that. I um, uh, I want that commentary there because usually what will happen is when you're building a scene or a character, the little details or the the, the little nuanced things that you're you're actually doing for the scene, a lot of times you won't remember them. It'll be something uh, kind of it turns into something what I call vague, uh, where you're like, yeah, I do did explain the scene, but you know what or what, what was I thinking on in the moment and I want to try to get all of those things recorded so uh, I don't have like a, a memory where I'm like, oh yeah it's just a scene about them too in the field or whatever right I want to be able to uh, explain why certain choices are made as far as the the first meeting of the two characters uh, and I want it to be something that uh, I recall on that day a lot of times I'll do that because when I'll go back and I'll listen to something that I, I was putting together, like if I'm uh, have an idea, sometimes I'll have a recorder. I'll put that in there. 
but it, it will help you to remember exactly what you're trying to do for that scene um, and, and why those choices were made either if it's for the animation side of it or if it's for some kind of play on emotion um, you know those details do do matter when, when you're trying to tell a story so those things will be added um, but yeah this is going to be part one because I am getting hungry uh, but yeah so basically this breakdown same thing that we did for the ear we're going to be doing for these pieces here um, and uh, you know what let's go let me do one more thing here since we're here so we got this piece kind of there and let's go we can just do the same thing with the ear and since we have uh, and I do this all the time for the the paint I will save all of these different pieces if I want to come back and change it you can um, but remember I always try to uh, you know or we can do undo but remember that always save um, your pieces you know back them up <laughs> and so is there's any artist that understands what that means um, you know how devastating it could be for you to have a, a dr drawn something that it has a, a certain look to it and then you try to draw it again and it, and it doesn't look the way you want it to look right so always <laughs> triple uh, save like I'm, I'm do I'm gonna do right now save back up um, because it is it could be very very heartbreaking to have some kind of idea that you jot it down or drew and then you come back and it's your computer for whatever reasons decides today's the day uh, and you lose that all right you don't want to do that uh, so back up everything um, so yeah so these two these pieces would be separate you can just uh, duplicate and then flip it like so and you know so these are the pieces that we'll have for the the face. So so far we do have the the hair, right? We've got the ears all set up here. I did to change the ears. There was a reason why I I did that. All right. So so far we got our pieces like so, right? You know what? Let's go and do. I might as well just do the head part here as well since we're already. Hey, we're looking for just a circle. Also, remember the label. <laughs> you don't want to be an idiot and be searching for all your pieces. All right, so let's clear. Uh, clear that out. All right, so. So on the all of these other pieces, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Cause just thought about something. I don't need the ear. What do I need? I need the face. I need yes. Yep. Okay. Um. So you can do this also here. Forgot to add, so edit, copy, and then bring it into paste. So, right. So when you go to the trace the bitmap, let's do that now here. Vectorize those lines, and you can vectorize the lines. Vector the line, such so clean vectors. I love it. All right, 
Uh, same thing we did before when we're playing around with these. We can get rid of whatever we don't need here. There we go. And if you know what I'm doing here, good for you. Because I just thought about it. I was going to do it the opposite way, but you can paint the vectors as well. And we got our bang that I wanted. There we go. Let's round these out a little bit, like so. And uh, get our little point. Kind of looks like a leaf. Uh, and if you remember what I was doing before, when you cut these out, it'll fix the shape usually. Yeah, good. Um, if you remember what I was doing before with the fill here. So if I want to fill this this hair piece up, I can just make sure I block it off here. Like so. And we got our hair kind of color, so let's go ahead and fill this in, and that's the lighter side, right? Alright, and, oops, made a mistake here. Um, in the settings, you will um, see options where it will say uh, ungroup or group. My settings are set up a certain way, so sometimes it'll grab everything. But let's go ahead and fill this other side. Maybe we want it a little bit darker. See here, which one here? Like so. That's weird. It, yeah. Let's try that again. I technically just wanted to fill that part here. All right, there we go. So back in. Like so. okay. Group. And this one, when you come in, you can start uh, basically doing your, your highlights and your everything you need to do as far as for your your setup here. And again remember when we click these spaces here, make sure it's below the black line. Right? So the black line's on top and these are on the bottom. And whenever you do, because technically, if you remember, this is going to be the bang part where it's going to blend in with the when we vectorize the the big that bigger hair piece. So when you do the overlapping, or when the character turns upside down, those lines technically won't. They should blend a certain way, but when that when the uh, when the hair is upside down, group object group group again. So whenever we do have these vectorized, and this is before your shading order, you're gonna see this little 
plus here and what you want to do is you can line it up to where you, exactly where you need it to be so this part here will be here so whenever I I do the turn that'll be where my my pivot point uh, will be right so when I whenever I do go to moho they have a way to do it in moho as well but that this is where the that bang part is going to be hanging from so it'll be hanging from on on top you can do all your blending uh here once you vet because this is not vector you can see how kind of crazy it looks but this here right when you do your blending on top even if you wanted to add other strands of hair you can do that as well right but this technically would be on top of that piece like so right and then you have to figure out what you want here on the top right so if we do even if you do layer them uh, once you get them vectorized make sure you're, you know you're blending and everything like that will uh, match and whatever you've drawn you go back to the uh, that part Right. So if we go here, all of these pieces. Um, so what will happen when this flips the other way? You just got to color this part into what that should look like. So when this does, if he is hanging from the tree, which he may or may not. Um, you got to make sure this matches and, and it doesn't look too uh, weird because this will be technically uh, where our pivot point will be right so if our pivot point is here we just need to make sure that all of this stuff where uh, it's going to be shown will kind of match with the other hair right and cartoons can be weird like that where a bang may fall and then the other part of the hair doesn't all fall <laughs> it's just remember folks it's only a cartoon <laughs> there's things that you may see there that they'll may kind of take you out of it but most of the time you're not paying attention Unless you you know you're one of those detailed uh, type of people, um, but let's go back to the final thing that we're doing here, right? So there we got that. So what are we going to do? We got the circle, right? And. Come here. We're just going to cut right where the circle is. Cut all of the circle stuff out of the way. And remember, we don't need the ears. At all. We're just concerned with just the headpiece for the puppet we'll be creating. So. So this is technically the head, right? So what do we do? The blending mode of the head and depends on how crazy you want to go. First thing is we want to make sure we get a will we make the circle over? Yep, we may. Or may not, let me see. Yeah, we got a lot of different pieces. We don't need those. So we'll cut those out as well. Did I just cut that? Oh, yeah, I did. 
didn't mean to do that. So that's the part. So basically, I'm going to just go ahead and duplicate this here because we're just going to be playing around with the circles of the eyes. And let's go back to the head. All right, and we got this circle, which will go here. And what we'll do, this is kind of uh, unorthodox, but just because I want to finish this and get this out of the way, let's, there we go. And duplicate and save as you like. We're just going to be concentrating on this circle for now. Not the shading or anything else. Alright. So we got the circle. Just like this one on this side. Now what we'll do is we have to make sure this everything kind of looks even. And to do that, we'll just we're gonna start making lines and boxes for that, right? So line for the middle of the face, right? And I'll usually do a couple other boxes for the uh, the eyes. Usually, make sure that this I haven't messed up the size or anything. So, all right, we got a box here. Let's move this yellow out of the way. All right, so we got our face and we got this box here. And basically I have this box set up right below the eye, right? Like so. And then I'll make our eyes even all the way across. Uh, the other thing is going to be when we draw our middle line this is the chin if you can see where the nose is a little bit off right but if our chin is here if I wanted to come in and kind of check uh, the measurements and there's other ways to do this you don't have to do it this way I just a lot of times I'll do it because I'm using the, uh, the paint right so if I make a box, say here, from here to there, right? Let's say I go all the way down to where the, the line starts, right? So right up against the edge of this eyeball right there. Please don't tell me it crashed. Of course it did. Uh, restart. And that's why you say, folks. One second, I gotta open the right one. All right, so yeah, that did crash. It takes a second out. Um, so I did label these to kind of help me. So we'll go back to what we're doing here. Let's just sketch. So most of the other things, so we already did the ear, right? So we don't really need to mess around with these ears. So let's make sure here, what do we got so far? All right, so we got the, the two ears. And again, this is gonna just be for our pieces we're gonna be putting into Moho here is the bang right which will be right about there and if you want to 
make those darker and change whatever you want to change on these and even if you want to go in um, I also the same way I do a lot of with the filter you can check whatever you need to check like so so this piece here oh made a mistake undo so this piece here anything or tracing anything now all right so we got this here uh, uh, stroke. And we're not messing with the stroke edit object ungroup okay this is black this is a darker color sign I think it was a lot a little bit lighter right something like that so even if you come in and you start coloring on top of anything you can use that same fill method like so just give you that piece there and you, if you want to come in and kind of play around with whatever fades you want to use and this would be technically for one, like almost close to getting everything finalized like you want it pieces did you uh, end up coming up with and uh, whatever fade so whenever you do get to the vector colors you want you can go out and always modify or change these as you want so if you want to use the blur to kind of shade in you can do it that way and kind of play around with different things You know, if you're adding trim or anything like that, you can use the same method. Get it as close as you want, all right? Or as dark as you want. And you can um, use the blur for that as well. You know, it'll give you slight variations, you know, based on how blurry you get. 
when you come in and you do any kind of highlights or anything like that. You can use blur as well. Or if you, even if you want to change the tone, you can. I do use blur for that. All right. So all your once you vectorize everything and you get everything clean. Up oh, first, let's go ahead and finish what we were doing before. All right. So if I'm doing a face here. Remove the sh the sh shading. Uh, all right. So basically, um, this would be the last part, right? So if we're coming in and I'm trying to make sure get everything vectorized and everything set up the way we want it, um, I'll come in and I'll start getting my face kind of measured out. Uh, the first one I usually do, it'll be for uh, under the eyes. If you kind of see here, it looks like the head is actually tilted a little bit, slightly. And I always remember back up that crash that had happened. Had a uh, too many mohos running at the same time. I had 14 and 13.5 running. So let's go ahead and see. It looks like that's tilted right. Yeah, I think so. All right, and then what we what I do here is when I go back, to ch you can check it. So this first box, uh, right? So it's right above the below the eye. So you want all of these things to kind of line up. So what you can do here is when you get your your center line drawn, just draw a center line. We know it's not center. So go ahead and move this a little bit to where we need it to be. All right? If I check the, the neck, make sure we're not going off too far. Just go ahead and remove some of this because this is that angles off a little bit. And remember, we're doing this because we're gonna we're gonna cut out this piece. This is the piece is gonna be for the head. Um, we already got everything else that's gonna be attached to the head, like the hair, right? got that done um, so now we're gonna just get this fixed up here all right so we have a red line we have this green box here that is right below where the eye is right so our other circle So this eye here, this the, uh, yeah, I think that jumped. That's it. So so I this one. So get this kind of moved up here in the place where the other one should be. And basically, with the eye, you'll just duplicate it just to make sure it's the same size of uh, oval or circle, and which they are. So we kind of know that it'll go right above the green line as well. Looks slightly above, right? A little slightly. And then we would come in. Uh, you can use the the pivot point of the nose here, so that'll kind of help you with whatever the sketches that you're doing. Um, but what I'll do here is I will create another box, kind of like a measuring box. And 
just make sure it's a fill one. Let's use, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, white. Alright. So, let's go ahead and get this here. So, the white, if you look like, see where right where the eye starts? Right here. It's kind of where we want it. We want it right here on that line here and right to the red line all right like so and then I would duplicate it like so and then you just move it over here like that all right so indicates if you look at it where the spacing is, the nose right in the middle, of the nose, the eye right here, and this eye piece here. So what we need to do is we need to just move this eye closer, right? Because we measured this one with this box. We know these two boxes are identical, and we'll just uh, and I did go back and I'll label these. It's helpful when you do that. <laughs> All right, so then we can move this. Oh, not that. And we move this right where we need it to be. So if I look at slightly above. So we'll just do that same thing here. Uh, but we know this right here is touching, and we know it's right where the line needs to be here. And then that, right? But it looks like this is slightly above the line, so just mask, get that right. Looks like that's right about where it needs to be. Like so. Uh, so when you do come in and you start to uh, color, um, we know we have the center of the face now. Uh, you can also do this as well. You've already got this matched up, right? So if you want to use these boxes to measure, uh, say, the edge from where this eye ends, right here, right, to where that circle ends, right here you can do that as well and you can check it I sometimes do that see how make sure that's not too crazy wide on one side or the other again um, if you're doing it by hand it won't matter because once you vectorize it it should fix all of that for you uh, but just to check this one you can kind of play around with it or right where the edge is and it looks like this one is a lot closer. So if the circle ends there, and this line seems to be overlapping, like so, right? And there's other ways you can go in and measure this. So technically, if I'm looking at this much more space, and I wanted to just come in here and just draw a line where that stops. Oh, it's too big. Let's go. And let's make it red. All right, so we know this line stops there, right? kind of where that piece will, will will snap in so you can do it that way as well and get a sense of how close or how far away you want so if I was to take this and move it to try to check it you can do it that way let's get rid of this other one we don't need it and just check it from you know wherever that line is to where it would start. Yeah, you know, 
just some of the quick ways you can do uh, to kind of check how far off you are when it comes to the, the head um, but I already know this is off because of where my, my hairline and everything is, is landing there so I was going to shrink it anyway so let's go ahead and that's where it is and what I'll do is I'll just come in and and shrink it a bit. So, just bring it in. All right, about there. Um, remember, you also have this big box that's on the outside. If you have everything centered correctly should be able to use all the different boxes that you created for the lines and kind of fix that. Um, you can make these lines as thin as possible so it'll give you more uh, I would say more uh, detailed if you want to come in or you can use the boxes on the outside. Um, most of these tools they have a measuring thing I don't usually use those like some of the stuff you can eye it um, and it doesn't have to be super perfect just depends on what you're doing um, but most of these templates if you're going to keep them forever which uh, a lot of times I'll do if you want to uh, check the, the sizes as well you can just create these boxes so if I duplicate this here and I want to just check it and see you know it's wide same width all that I can do that method as well kind of give you a clue of how far off uh, if you are far off like so so just some of the things uh, that you can do here uh, so, but everything else we already have, right? So we have our ear, our hair. Uh, so the the last piece here, we're gonna kind of put together here. It's gonna be uh, the face. So, So what I usually will do, since I got the, the eyes and the nose all lined up where I want to be, I can go ahead and merge all three of those. So now I've merged all three, two, uh, the, basically the circles for the eyes and then the, the nose all are one piece like so. All right. So that's my outline, and once I know where my my outline is, for as the face, when I go back and I start to color, and remember we're we're coloring underneath those circles. And I'm not going to really need to blend it here. But what you can do is keep all of that separate. You make a new layer, just go underneath this layer. So when you do come in, it's just behind it. And you can kind of keep that tone that you want to keep all the way uh, around. because we're going to get rid of all the um, like the extra stuff you'll just be able to move all that stuff out of the way and remember we're just doing this because we're, gonna cr we're creating a uh, the parts 
uh, for the face. Um, you can do fill, but what will happen is if you have a blend um, that you're using, you may uh, the tone may change a little bit. Um, so that's why a lot of times I'll just go underneath the uh, whatever I've already kind of toned out. Like here, I still got to fix this tone here, things like that. Um, but when we start going over this part around the eyes we have to uh, kind of change that so we got to be on top right so we've already done the back fill we can just go ahead and merge that if you want you can go back if you're a real super crazy neat person just start you know cut any excess uh, out of the way oops too much and if you start getting uh, frustrated or tired just take a take a break so you're not like rushing yourself unless you have to um, I always recommend taking snacks and breaks, stuff like that. Sometimes that'll help you. Your body may be uh, starting to phase <laughs> when you've uh, been doing something all day. Alright, so we kind of kept our tone there. Um, but we don't need a lot of this, right? So. can do is when you start coloring on top um, I would say technically around the eyes would be a little bit darker um, you can do this in here or once you transfer it to uh, Inkscape it's all up to you um, but Where our circle is, and we've already kind of got the spacing right, like we want. So, uh, if you want to make this easier, where you, you can't really see the black outline there, kind of lower this and then when you go in remember you're on top you can kind of make sure that you're coloring uh, all the like the excess this way Um, the reason why you can lower this, because um, there's a tone that you, if I don't know if you're using tone, but if you are, uh, I keep this as low as possible because whenever I do get it into Inkscape, I want to try to match that same kind of tone. Uh, so I just make it like slight. So it's kind of like blending in a little bit. But I'll remember like or like the nose is going to be where those you know where that shine and stuff like that is going to be so because basically the cutout whenever we start measuring where everything should go uh, we got to fill in all those gaps to where it was kind of off and that's all you're doing here to just highlight it And, but if you're not using any kind of tone or shading or anything like this, this should be a breeze because basically you would just go here and just start darkly painting it. Just depends on, you know, what your style is. Uh, but for me, I got to remember some of these tones here. 
kind of helps me when I start to configure everything for the face. Um, on these here, same thing with the eyebrows. You don't need this for because we're going to be creating these pieces. So get rid of the eyebrows as well. And um, remember, we're not going to need this bang anymore. On this one here, I will go a little darker because do it that way, it'll take forever. So I'll kind of cut this out here. And for those who may not uh, be changing this into a uh, vector and you want to use like blending modes, you can always use blur to do that. So you won't just get that one solid unblended look. Some animations it doesn't matter again for the blending, but if you're character is blended and you have like you know maybe a pigmentation things like that um, those are things you might want to keep in there and most of the time with the blending part as long as the cheeks, uh, I'll remember everything else most of the time. Um, but technically under the eyes would be a little bit darker. So if I wanted to come in and change that or change the tone, you could do that as well. But we don't really need to worry about that now, right? Alright, so we got all of that out of the way. Let's go ahead and get this back to like so. Okay, that's so everything we covered. Uh, and what I meant by blur, basically, if you want to, you're using this style, you can just come here for this layer, and then if you go to effects uh, and click blur, it will blur that for you as much as you like. So it'll give you maybe a little bit smoother look for you if, whenever you do this. Uh, and I'm going to do this just because there's tones that I want to remember. So I'm going to just do a slight blend here, or it's not just so solid, but a little bit blended, like, right, or everything's covered, but you know what I mean? I can still see the red of the cheeks blend I need to remember, and in this area here, I need to remember that as well. So we can see the eyebrows a little bit, but that doesn't matter with the tone, so we'll keep that, and we'll just merge those two all right so right now we've got what we want as far as the head right because we don't want anything when we're building the the puppet um all of these pieces will be separate um and we're gonna get rid of that mouth here in a second all right so we got our nose we got our eyes sockets and everything and we can go ahead and merge that as well. So we'll merge so so basically you're merging this and then the your nose. Right? All the filler for the for the uh, for the circle, right? The circle's still separate. Alright, but we can merge these all together like so 
All right. So if we go all, oh, where's the? I know I labeled it. So I think I called it round, didn't I? Yeah. So that's our circle. All right. And we can go ahead and merge the circle because we kind of get everything blended that we want in the middle. We got everything lined up for the eyes and exactly where they were to be. And if you feel okay about that, you'll just go ahead and merge those as well. All these other pieces you see me ignoring, this is just me doing <coughs> uh, saving and um, uh, copying backups. Like, And like you, you saw before, I can't believe that that actually crashed like that. Um, <laughs> so it turned out to be a good lesson to learn. Uh, just remember, just always save when you can. Because you do not want to lose start from scratch. Unless you like that kind of thing. Some people do. Alright, so we got our circle here, right? And we got our, our fill. We can merge those. Like so. Uh, if you want to go back, sometimes I'll do this as well. Uh, if I go back and I start coloring this I'm not going to do it here because most of the blend I'm going to do in uh, Inkscape um, say I wanted to you know give a darker tone where I know the hair will be you can do that as well and you can use all the pieces as you already cut out to uh, kind of do that that blend all right so we don't we're not going to do that here we don't need to so we've got everything I think we need uh, uh, the other thing is if you want to go back and check all your um, you know those pieces that you cut out like your ear right so if we look at this here and maybe you want to change tones you can do it that way all right all right so we're gonna do same thing like I just said we're gonna just duplicate this and we're just doing that so we can save it so I'll make two extras just in case and now I'm going to go ahead and save it again, even though we just saved it. All right? And we're just going to grab this, even though it's not finalized here. We're going to grab this. Copy. Edit and paste. Bring it into Inkscape. So, what do we have so far, right? We have our hair. That's going to be separate. We got her ears. Both of these will be separate. We got our other ears. Yes, done on purpose. Two ears, one human, one not. And then we got our stubborn bang here, which will go on the top. Remember, sometimes when using Inkscape, there are layers that are not connected. So if you find that you're trying to bring this on top by just doing this and nothing's happening, it just means that those two layers are separate. So let's see. So if I click on the face, like so, and let's do it the opposite way. So let's go ahead and grab this. And if I edit and copy, right? So now I'm going to go to this layer by clicking the face, and then I'm going to go ahead and click paste, and it should bring this into the layer we're bringing on top, right? This one here is not on the same. What? That's weird. Why did they do it then? Well, doesn't matter. But if you have any pop, um, problems with that, you can check that. Just make sure everything is uh, on your vectors is all all set. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna lay these out. This is my template. You can do that because you want to remember what everything is supposed to look like. So you got that right. Got that. got our bang goes here All right got our ears 
these I'm probably going to uh, nail them down to the head but it's up to you for now we'll just keep those outside sometimes what I'll do is I'll keep these and if I want to change these or make them bigger or smaller I, uh, I can do that right so right now we've got these pieces So when we export all of these PNGs and we get the right blend, uh, you can see it will uh, have a high quality to it. So when we do bring it into uh, Moho, um, your blending and everything will be done, your shading will be done, and it will be a real clean look. Alright, so now we're going to go through other options here. So if I want to go ahead and say I did want to go ahead and... Uh, vectorize this Let's see um, I went through this in the other uh, video but if you're trying to find out uh, how this works uh, I did a video on that it goes into a little bit more detail um, but basically we're copying uh, this and we're going to change this into a vector if you can see here you see how this is not clean this is PNG we uh, you can kind of guess find out how many colors you think this is for me I'm not concerned I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, copy it because I just want the uh, the template so six colors is what I'm choosing and go all the way up as like and what it'll do is it'll pick out all the different colors variations that are in the image and it'll separate it for you uh, but they're all layered on top so I'm going to click OK to copy alright there we go and so basically that is part of what it got this is what we're really going to be using here in a minute uh, that as well okay so let's see here if I wanted to come in and use these uh, I could but we're not right the really only thing I'm really want to uh, get from here is going to be these circles and that'll be without the mouth right couple of things you can do um, if you want if you want to come in and you want to recreate the circle sometimes I will do this method here edit and duplicate and we'll just change it to any other color say yellow doesn't really matter so we're going to just create a, uh, a circle with a space um, there are other ways to do this I'm going to explain why I'm doing it this way here in a second and then what I'll do is I'll just uh, fill right so say I want this a little bit thinner I'll go back go maybe 11 and remember when you fill it's going to be filling in this red that's what it's doing so if I do that here it should be a little bit smaller like so alright so if I come in I'll just make this black right and I'll come in here and make it as uh, make sure that if you're changing this make sure this is locked if you don't lock it it won't give you it'll change in like oval space unless that's what you want right so remember to uh, Uh, lock this so it'll keep that same uh, degree for you so when I bring it smaller I uh, can just put it here like so and make another one right like so and kind of the same way if you want to come back and measure it uh, for your records first let's get all of these out of the way here just cut cut that as well and 
you can change these into uh, round nodes. Uh, some of them when you cut out, it may fix. If you see here, you see a little bit extra here. You use this round, get get it right about there, right? And same thing here. You can just get rid of this. And we can add another one to fix that if that happens. Just to add another one, you'll just wait for the glove to pop up because the glove is finding the, the actual line. Just click on that, double click, and it'll create another node, and then we'll change it from this square to a circle, like so. And we'll fix that right there. All right. Alright, this one here, I'm going to get rid of this mouth. You know what? I'm going to keep it kind of. So let's cut some of these nodes out. And this here, there we go. And remember, if you want to add some extra nodes, just the glove pops up. Double click. Same thing underneath. Double click on that line when the glove pops up. And if you want to change these, or if you grab them and you make changes, you can actually move them or take them out. Uh, so I'm going to put this to the side here because we're going to be going through the kind of the blending here and let's go ahead and get our colors all straight so make sure black alright and so remember we just created these circles, so just remember they're the same tone as the outline, so black. Make sure you're all black there. So, then, it, since you're not going to be using any of this, you can come in and just uh, erase it all. All these nodes that was the eye. Since we created a new circle for the eye, you don't need those and when you use this if you want to use this as some kind of template of what you're going to be doing like so you can start to use this to uh, you know paint and cover um, but for now get these out of the way let's just cut You can also use this if you want to use this as your your, your fill. Uh, just remember, whenever you do that, you can keep it below, so it's not on top of the black line like this. You just want to make sure it's below the black line, like so. All right. So we can kind of use that for now and play around with it. So for this part here. Um, you just got to go in and play around with the nodes and most of the time I'll do that by deleting them so let's delete that like so and kind of only need really four cut that out so all of these are square uh, nodes as you can see you can just grab them all and you just click on here and it'll change them all to uh, the round nodes for you. And then you can kind of manipulate them the way you need to to get around. And, and remember, this is below, so it'll be below all these sockets. Uh, you can do the same thing here. You don't need these. Cut these out. 
and we have a space here we want to keep and I'll remember we only need four cut these out and grab all of these and change them to circles like that and since it's underneath you'll just come back and get everything kind of underneath the black circle here select that one as well hide that right. so when we come here and we want to move these nodes over we'll just select them all again and we can move them like so and with the angles sometimes I will add extras just to hide it like that and we'll do the same thing over here and I'll add some extras just to hide it but some people are real good when you do that you can get a uh, if you only need the round nodes you can kind of work that out uh, the next thing I'm probably going to do here again we'll use the Clado method which I call Clado method uh, so I just want to spit I want to image I'm sorry I want to shape like this so again I'll use my fill put that there and it'll create that like so when I come in and I start changing the tones and everything like that I will have that piece and I can change the tones as I need to again remember make sure this is underneath all the, the black outline like that and then you can come in I'll change this to a circle here. and I'll be able to manipulate these the way I want and when you start putting the face together um, a lot of times your how you shade or you know add different color tones to it it will actually give you a, uh, a shape with just doing just the tones uh, so on this here I basically would just click on this sorry messed that up click on this here this little piece we made and uh, we'll just duplicate it and then we'll mirror it which is here mean flip it and then I'll put that here again make sure it's underneath like that and that's pretty much probably gonna all do today uh, but really quickly when you come here and you start doing your blend remember there's different ways you can do it um, a lot of times when I'm using the the fill um, depending on what I'm filling uh, I'll just create shapes as I go so as long as it's bordered into a place uh, you can do it that one and then when, um, with, with the shading when I come in and you can start to try to add the shading the way you want it to look and things like that uh, again make sure that this is going to be underneath the black part so I'll just select and then we'll go one below right so when you start going in here and changing or getting your tones right and everything like that uh, a lot of times when you're doing that you can come and 
just use the blur right so just slight blur it'll kind of start to mix it for you and then you can change the you know how much you want to add with the blur like so um, and then again on this most of the time if I'm doing one thing on one side uh, I'll just duplicate it same thing here with under the eyes when we start blending just use the blur to kind of get everything kind of started all right this white space will be the bridge of the nose technically so you can play around with those tones as you like like so sometimes you will get a like overlap here usually when that happens one i once i cle complete the full vector and the tones are like I want it. I can basically uh, one e okay. So if I do a vector, and I want to start doing some kind of edit, and if I bring this into Paint, it will be a large file, but I still will be able to edit it and cut out anything that I don't want. So once I get all these blends correctly, and if there is some kind of like call it like graffiti because that's what it looks like to me any kind of graffiti that's you know shading when you don't want shading you can do it that way or you can hide the shading by creating uh, a white circle you can put it on top which will get rid of that for you so now when you do blend and everything like that you won't get that graffiti right um, but I don't most of my characters I don't have them that's not the way I do the eyes <laughs> so a lot of times I'll come back and kind of cut all of that out before I do the eyes uh, when you do this as well when you're doing your blending getting everything you want you can start to create uh, your eyeballs as well and you can start playing around with those see how big you want them to be or how small depending on the character and I kind of mess around with it as well if I look at the spacing on that um, sometimes I like it sometimes I don't so the last part here on the nose uh, you can vectorize the nose, but a lot of times um, I'll do it differently. I'll come in and I really want to ma make sure the measurement in the space is correct. So, kind of do one of these here. And even if I don't want to do like a black outline, uh, I don't have to. Um, but so when I start doing the pieces for the nose sometimes if you do fill you can get that it doesn't always work so sometimes what you can do is make sure it's lined up yeah it's right size um, I use the the fill for this as well. So again, it's just me eyeballing it, looking at like different how how I want that piece to look. And I'll just create something like that. And I'll use the fill bucket just to give me that little piece there. And then go up, kind of get that shape the way we want it. All right, about like that, right? Yeah. And just duplicate it. Mirror, like so. Oh, didn't want to do that. 
like so. And we'll create another one of these. It's usually the shadow for underneath the nose. So we'll just duplicate this. Like so. And then we'll get the color kind of matched up there. And we can shrink this. Uh, make sure this is locked if you want to keep this shape. But we'll just change it like so. Alright. And then if you notice on my piece here, look at it. It's a real thin line here. As you can see, well, again, uh, it's just a locking mechanism. It's only happening for me because I got certain settings here. All right, so right about there. If I want to manipulate this, if it's not something I create from scratch, it doesn't allow me to do that. So that's why you will see me use this here and I'll just go to fill fill it up All right so now if I want to manipulate it I just not these three when I want to manipulate this one like so now I can manipulate it because I've created a, a new um, shape by just using the fill once you fill it you can change these nodes so let's go back. I'll do undo here. And then we'll keep this because really we don't need to mess with that too much. So when I get this on top, and I want to get that thin curve that we have there, change the square node here to a round one. All right. Do that same thing here. Square it around node. Same thing here. I don't really want help. So, so around. Like so. make another round one here like so and play with it or manipulate it to get that kind of same line um, so when we So that real thin line that we're looking for. So when we put it on top, and so we can see a little bit better here. Um, then we can start to maneuver these around. Right, so if that's that curve, depending on where it starts, right? This this curve. We can kind of find out where that curve should be. This will be round. Right. And we can start to manipulate it a little bit. So where we get that that line that I want there, right? Same thing here. Just make another round one. And kind of bring that in. Um, also, sometimes we'll use this square here 
and I'll use that as like a measuring thing for me all right so I want to know exactly where that point is so this point right where that starts I want to just make sure that that's what's going on right here as well so we just you can create a box and kind of measure it out uh, that way as well uh, these go on top of course you know what before I do that let's bring everything back to there for that one and this goes here change that a little bit go like so okay Uh, and on these as well, uh, you can manipulate those. Uh, you can manipulate these as well. Um, when I do these, I can duplicate this. And I can use this as a uh, lighter shade. right about there so this would technically go underneath right so we got that little bit of a lighter shade doing it like that where the nose will be and of course you can manipulate these as well with the nodes and say we wanted to change kind of the shape of the node we can kind of play around with it because technically this would be where the nose uh, has a little bit of an outline and you can use shading either way Let's cut this one out so it's a little bit straight um, you can use the shading either way whenever you do the uh, If you want to get this a little bit sharper for the nose, you can make adjustments there and kind of play around with it till you get it the way you want it for that. But let me go back here. So all of those pieces here. It looks um, like it's hovering because this has shading on it. That's why it looks weird a little bit so even when you're starting to get everything put in place you're actually copying this exact thing whatever you want to do as far as tracing or having it float below and matching everything up to, as far as where you want everything you can do that uh, very easily you can just uh, open all of your Objects and uh, oops, wrong one. And then I can't remember where that other box was. Yeah, there we go. So, um, go to objects and then, uh, object properties. So if you wanted to try to use this to color over it or you want to change this to 
where you can uh, cover over it you can do that and this is helpful because you can select this here which is this one and then you can lock it oh, did I get the right one let's make sure all right so if I lock this here I can just start to use this as the template to you know you can do that for shading or whatever but you just start matching everything up since this is locked in, in, in place um, you get a real good look of how everything is kind of lining up or not lining up depending on you know what you wanted to do even if you wanted to come in and you know because these circles technically are a little bit thinner so if I wanted to come in and start to get those a little bit thinner I could do that as well um, you can also measure so you know the eyeballs about this size here All right. and if I wanted to check to see how close I got it I could do that as well um, remember you're building this out once you get everything built out and you get all your 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 tones and uh, everything together um, you'll be able to you know kind of come back and use everything that you've already uh, kind of completed um, technically there's so if you want it to um, sometimes this takes a bit longer Let's go ahead and fix this here. So let's see. Gotta unlock that, which is here. Bring this back up. So, say you just didn't want to, you know, start from scratch to blend. Uh, you can do that. You say you wanted to keep, you know, this blend, right? So if I was to come in here and kind of like get it a little bit cleaner, you can do that as well. So you would have these outlines and say you want it to I'm gonna grab this one here. Edit duplicate. Like so um so the clean look of a vector right you can put this on the uh, the outside the outline right so technically all your blending would be <coughs> kept the same <coughs> excuse me this black is not looking totally black to me so my eyes let's see here yeah that doesn't look there we go <laughs> it's like, what's going on um so basically say you did want to keep this blending uh in in the character um and for for these tones here uh you kind of manipulate those um but you can come back say i want to use the, the this blend because it looks a little bit better you can come in and start to uh, play around with things as well right so if I'm this part where I was drawn in and trying to figure out what the shading would be I can you get some pieces and start to kind of maneuver uh, around this because I like the shading part here right um, so you can build these little pieces and kind of add them where, where you want them uh, to get like whatever better look you want you can lighten them up um, you can distort them what this will help you especially if you're you know blending on one thing and you don't want to spend an hour to get this blended <laughs> like this um, you can use that all right so whenever I make these a little bit thinner you know it'll hide some of the the, the back there uh, and then when you start to manipulate everything else um, 
as long as you have that clean outline uh, for the for that layer and you want to keep all of that let's go ahead and do let's do a clay over here it's just this fill like that okay, there we go so when you start coming in and uh, getting everything kind of blended in and you start doing um, you know your shadow for your eyebrows whenever you start to change these pieces you're blending underneath you can kind of keep it and then have little uh, pieces that you can create what the hell is going on today all right there we go uh so s smaller pieces so say for instance you this little darker blend there right so if i Use the dopper right here, and I want to just blur like so. You can start to match up uh, the blend as long as everything is underneath. You can kind of keep playing around with it until you get it the way you want it, um, and the same way you would do for the you wanted to keep that template like I said before say for instance you just want to keep all of it right and for the eye part um, you can just and so when you do get it into moho and you want to start kind of playing around with you know uh, different blends and stuff like that uh, you can create a a mask for like the way the eyes would look um, for the the character and all of the other things you can kind of move around so the way you start to piece it together and start to get the uh, all these pieces and, and, and parts uh, together um, if you want to take your time and, and you know however long you want to take you can do that and you can either blend everything together you know to make it perfect like you want it to look and take your time that way or if you're you know not worried about that whatever you blend in and whatever you kind of uh, add to it can always mask or cover over it or even change the tone um, you just want to make sure that all of the pieces that you're kind of playing around with um, so we know the hair on here will be on top right the difference between that when you do the shading uh, the other way um, if you're changing tones for any reason you can just put shadows where you need shadows so if you think about like below the, the this eye part uh, even if I was to come in and start to change these tones or the, the blurred tones or whatever um, if you want to create that kind of space for yourself to come in and then color over it you have that ability as well. Uh, Inkscape is good for that because, you know, depending on how, I guess, how long it we want to take when it comes to getting everything right, uh, it'll be up to you.
but it's good at blending things and highlighting um, for particularly like this tone color I'll try to get it as close as possible uh, you can and then you can kind of manipulate it as you need uh, for me technically I probably wouldn't use that would make it a little bit uh, more red uh, same thing when you're you're adding uh, like pieces here you can create um, all of these uh, separate like pieces I'll just do this real quick for the show you the, how cleaner it will look for you for all your different pieces that you want to add um, you can use these and then you could um, kind of manipulate everything else by uh, the, sh the shading or you you know if you're going to start changing all of these here you can do that you can either do it by the shading and have like a very flat looking uh, you know illustration and then if you don't like that as well where you see it's not as clean and sharp you can just add those pieces you need and then uh, cover on top of it and make it as light or as dark as you like right so if you're doing two-tone things where you know when the, the mouth opens you can add all of that in uh, moho as well so but those close-ups if you're really worried about you know the close-ups you can take your time and just keep doing little pieces and, and kind of put them putting them together uh, and changing because really what you're, what you're kind of looking at is just the outline of most of uh, these so if if you can create an outline like a dark outline you know for the mask or changing those tones and everything you know the slow way you can always do that uh, as well and make the adjustments as needed but uh, yeah so this was supposed to be short but um, we'll just call this part part uh, one um, once we get everything cleaned up and we get a very clean looking vector we'll go ahead and start to uh, swap out these pieces um, and you'll you'll be able to see a, a big difference when you're doing close-ups and, and shading and everything like that uh, you'll be very surprised how uh, professional you can get it to look uh, but yeah play around with all of these different shadings and stuff like that um, and then when you do import them into moho separately um, we can manipulate the hair we can manipulate you know um, we can do a mask for the mouth um, there will be so many different um, variations to kind of play around with um, but we're going to go ahead and end this call this part one uh, I do appreciate you guys signing up on uh, the YouTube um, again I will still try to answer those questions um, I would say probably two or three times uh, a week depending on how busy um, I get but I, I do appreciate the feedback and I hope you guys have a great rest of your uh, I'm in Florida so it's 10 uh, p.m. night or where we are in the world thank you again bye bye